Shalom. It's your brother Malcolma from the branch of GMS Chicago. Uh, coming at you with another lesson, giving all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It's the name of the Father and the Son. Um, giving giving uh, double honors unto the apostles of GMS and the elders of GMS. All right, that rule well. Uh, and salutations to the Akim out there that are doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so, and to the confusion of faith and the Akwath who are also listening and learning and doing their parts. Um, this is, uh, I'm not sure what this is going to be called, but I watched a video by a guy, uh, by an agent. It's clear to me that it, that this guy has to be an agent. And he destroys Apologia, all right? But Apologia has been destroyed by GMS a hundred times over already, just, just on doctrine alone. And it's an easy thing to prove that the Hebrew Israelites, all right, were a dark race of people. The relics in the history proves that beyond a shadow of a doubt, Okay. You know the relics in the history that they choose to avoid and not to bring out. But the but the problem is is that the internet is still up, and all that information can easily be attained. You, all you know, right, and to deny it just makes you look like a foolish liar that you are. Okay, but there's a couple points that this guy um, from the Hebrew Nation uh, building, um, and the first was was the slander of GMS. All right. Using a, a Edomite tactic, not acknowledging who the Edomites were. I didn't watch the whole video, but I never heard him once say Edomite, and I never once heard him say the name of the Lord. All I heard him say was Jesus Christ, which is a sign of an agent. Okay, and I'm going to bring out scriptures to, to back up and prove everything that I've said. So that's the most important thing. He never once used the name of, of the Lord, and I'm going to get a scripture to substantiate what I've said, and that's one thing he did. And then he, it is clear that he had no lack of uh, understanding of the scriptures because he brought out scriptures that were really powerful scriptures, but they were completely broken down wrong. And uh, let's see if we can get some clarity on some things. So uh, in the book of Acts, yeah, that's where I'm going. You don't know what made me turn to Galatians. But... Uh, Let's go to Acts. Let's do this first. All right. Now, before I read it, let's readdress, readdress the thing about GMS. What the guy did was he used a soundbite from a from an uh, Sarnetta video and a Polite video, and and didn't use it for lack of a better word, because I hate using this word, because this is a word that, that Esau and scoffers love to uh, hide behind, but out of context. He never, they soundbited and clipped it and edited the video, and you didn't hear all the information. And to give a perfect example, I did a video just the other day where the same thing happened, and a man lost his life, even though it was ordained for him to do so, and he was demonized, okay? And that will be, and I'm talking about Mike Brown. So what they did to the apostles of GMS is no different from what was done to Mike Brown. What they did was presented a video of an action, of a statement of, of something going on without presenting what happened prior to that. Okay? And what they did in the Mike Brown situation was there's two videos. One is surfaced and it's all over the internet. All right? If anyone wants to say something stupid or racial or whatever. But Mike Brown was was innocent of the charge that, that he ended up dying for. OK, Mike Brown had already made a transaction and it looked like an illegal transaction. All right, because I couldn't see it well enough, but with my own eyes. But what I did see clearly was there wasn't a transaction. He pulled something out of his pocket or his bag. I forget which. And he placed it on the counter and the guy took it and he sniffed it and looked at it. Passed it to a couple of his buddies, um, and these were uh, Ishmaelites, Arabs, okay, in a gas station, and uh, 
and and then the guy took it and 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 put it away and turned around and grabbed two boxes of cigarellos and gave them to Mike Brown and placed them in a white plastic bag for him. And then Mike Brown took the bag. You can see that they acknowledged one another and he turned to walk out. And then he stopped, turned around and gave the guy the bag back and said something to the effect that he'd be back for it later. All right. When he came back for it the next day, when he came to grab the bag, I'm just going to assume that the guy there didn't know of the transaction of the day before and tried to stop him. And that's where the pushing and shoving match came in because the guy tried to stop, tried to keep him from taking his own property, which he had made an exchange for. And so I, I had to bring that up because that shows you that's how devious the so-called white man is. Who is Esau Edom? And that is how devious agents are who are paid by Esau Edom. All right. Because he's acknowledging because this guy the Hebrew nation is acknowledging that with the Israelites, but then the one group of Israelites is telling them the 100% uncut truth. All right. Because I wish I could, the scripture's in my head, but I can't think where it is right now. But it says that the Bible is full of dark sayings, lamentation, and woe. The rape thing is one of those. Okay. There were laws um, for rape, and I'm not going to go into them. We've already done this a hundred times, okay? And Israelite men were in the ancient world weren't just going around raping women, okay? They did not do that, okay? But rape did, did uh, uh, occur in every nation and every race as it still does today. And the Bible actually has laws on how to deal with it when it happens. And in the Hebrew custom... If you if you went on into a woman who did not scream out, all right, and she was unmarried, you had to pay her father a dowry. Because he was someone was going to pay him a dowry for his daughter anyway, and you now ruined that. So now you're stuck to take care of this woman, and now she's your wife. That was the deal. If the woman was already married, okay, and she does scream out, then that man would be put to death. For his crime. You didn't go to jail. You didn't get a record. You got put to death. Okay. If the woman did not scream out. And she was married. Then the woman and the man got put to death. That is the law that is written in the Bible. That is the dark saying of lamentation and woe. Which people do not want to acknowledge. And this guy. The Hebrew uh, uh, nation builder. Is playing on. The uh, the uh, emotions of unlearned people, knowing that civilians are not going to know or understand the whole rape doctrine and the laws that are written in the Bible on it. All right. Knowing that they're not going to do it and they're going to immediately think of rape as it is today. So that's just all I'm going to say on that. All right. The Bible explained that clearly, man. OK. Now let's get down to some breaking down some other things. He's making this the black thing, clearly. And he clearly does not know the difference between a Hamite and, and an Israelite. Ethiopians are Hamites. Because he's in the video it states that the Ethiopians can trace their roots back to Israelites. No, they claim that they're Israelites through their mothers. And the Bible clearly tells you that you can only be Israelite through the seed of man. Your father has to be the Israelite. And the most simplest scripture on that is Numbers 1 and 18. OK. So I'm not going to go into big detail on that, but I am going to go into a couple of biblical references to prove that Ethiopians are Hamites because they're from the line of Cush from Ham's son Cush. OK, first book I'm going to use is the Bible Dictionary, the Young's Bible Dictionary, which was put together by C. Douglas Young, Ph.D. OK. And a group of Israeli uh, scholars. Okay. Yeah. It says George, well, some Greek guy, Guillaume Kamakis, PhD, president of the Institute of the Holy Land Studies, uh, Jerusalem. John R. Kohlenberger, the third, all right, theologian, bachelor, and master's. And then uh, James Swanson, same thing. Uh, and then C. Douglas Young was the general editor. All right, so that so you have four 
scholars, okay, that put this book together. Let's go to see what they said about uh, Ham, okay? And I'm going to place this to the, close to the camera so that the viewing audience may be able to read it. And it says, Ham, a son of Noah and a father of Cush, Egypt put in Canaan. See further on each of these four. While they all may have been dark skinned. Okay. Now remember, they were all dark skinned. And Cush is the line that the Ethiopians come out of. All right. That will be like Barack Obama's people. It says... They were, they were all dark skinned. They are not the forefathers of the Negroid races. Negroid is in plural, which is the 12 tribes, which is another thing that he never mentioned this guy. He did mention black Hebrew Israelite and this Hebrew Israelite. All right. And he did not mention the Latin and native tribes here in Americas. Okay. That is a sign of an agent. All right. That's why I said Negroid races, plural. But rather the people, because where do the Negro races come out of? Because the scholars just told you that they didn't come from Ham. They're not Africans. And we know that they're not Japhetic. The only son left is Shem. All right. And it says, but rather associated with the with with Egypt means they were in slavery there. And in the north continent of Africa, the Egyptians thought of Canaan as one of their promises in the very late time. So let's see something. I got some some facts written about down about those Negro races that were in Egypt that were associated in Egypt. They were in captivity there. I read this the other day. It looks like I got to read it again. This is from a book, so you can everything that I'm showing you can be researched and you can get it on your own. So none of this is my opinion. Everything that I'm showing you is factual and scriptural, historical documents, historical relics, historical information. All right. That was put together by scholars. OK, because they've looked up and studied this stuff and have the materials. OK, this is Dr. Samuel G. Morton book in ancient Egyptica. 1844, page 66, reveals the study of 750 craniums of Negroes found in Egyptian graves. Hold on. What did it say? It says, but rather the peoples associated with Egypt in the north continent of Africa. So it's letting you. Right. And, and, and the truth of the matter is, is that Egypt is on the northeast uh, continent, the very east corner. And, and you can walk there two days to, to Jerusalem, man, to Israel, I, should, I, I meant to say. It says, uh, Morton states their, their status was the same in 1844 as in ancient Egypt. So these Negro races were in ancient Egypt. And they weren't the ruling class people because they were the slaves, the Hebrew slaves, man. So for a guy to make a video, all right, and especially when you look at the video, the video looked like it was made in TMZ studios. So this guy was an agent and funded by Esau. Okay. Look how plain my video is. I'm sitting here with my, my phone, all right, on the counter in my kitchen. You know, bringing out with brick books. This guy has editing and sound bites and sound effects. And this guy's funded and ate in by Esau because that's what they do. Because why? Because Jake is simple and like entertainment and people are simple and like entertainment. OK, and the truth is going to be plain, cut, dry and simple. All right. Next source of the Cushites. E being the fathers of the Egyptians. I mean, I'm sorry. I said there, I mean the Ethiopians. Salakia. This is the Zondervan's Compact Dictionary Bible. Definition of Ham. Perhaps Hot, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor. All right, pro means to push. Gene is Genesis, beginning. He became a progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. All right. So let's start by putting that one to the camera. So you can, so if you've never seen it, you can pause it and read it. See if we can get it in frame. 
right? And the other one. Okay, pause it, read it, turn the page, get the rest of the definition at the top. Pause it, read it, and weep. All right. Next point that this guy uh, did not break down, okay? Uh, that he, he uh, the whole thing about Cornelius, okay? He, he said that GMS started teaching that Cornelius wasn't, was an uh, Israelite. And he also uh, uh, was plainly saying that salvation is unto all. All right. Which completely cancels out the whole book of Obadiah. The whole book of Obadiah is just a lie, huh? All right. And many, many, many other scriptures. And also plainly, uh, he, he showed you the documentations of the Israelite going, going into slavery. And when you get to the book of Revelation, 13th chapter. Okay. I believe it's 13, 9, or 10. And it reads, If any man has an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So if all can make it, it says that the, the Israelites are going to take into captivity those who took them into captivity. So how are you going to make it if you're an Edomite heathen and go into captivity? Because that's the, it, it, you, your doctrine is retarded, man. It makes no sense. Okay? And then in, in Psalms 83, it names the nations by, by nations. All right? And then it's, and it says many places in the Bible uh, um, how all the nations have benefited, basically, from the downfall of the Israelites. We got scattered to the four corners of the earth and to the, all the nations, man. But back to this uh, Cornelius thing. Um, let's get a few scriptures. All right. Let me get. Let me let me set this up because they don't acknowledge that Israelites were serving in the armies and being soldiers in the. Uh, In the Roman armies, man. They're not doing that. Okay. And let me just bear with me for a moment. Let me find it. Uh, hmm. Right. Now, let's read. I'm going to read this now. It says, and this is Acts 10 and 1. And then I'm, I'm also holding the book of Maccabees. So this is Acts 21. And it says, there was a certain man, a Cessar called Cornelius of the Centurion Band. A Salaki. There was a certain man, a Cessar called Cornelius, a Centurion of, of the band called the Italian Band. A devout man. All right. Now, when you look, start reading about devout man, every time it mentions devout, it's mentioned the, the, the Jews or the Israelites. Okay. And had come to fear... Uh, Yahweh, I'm gonna say his name, with all his house, and 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 gave many alms to the people and prayed to Yahweh always, man. Okay. Now that now to say that the other nations can have salvation, that would make this scripture right here a lie. Okay, that would make Joel and Amos liars, man. So, uh. To you, Mr. Hebrew uh, uh, nation builder, I'm going to go with Joel and Amos on this one. All right. This is uh, Amos 3 verses 1 and 2. Hear this, this word which Yahweh has spoken unto you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which are brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for your iniquities. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's find Joel now. It 
This is Joel 2. And 27. And ye should know that I am in the midst of Israel. And I am the, and that I am Yahweh, your power, and none else. And none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and the remnant of, Ye of Yahweh shall call. All right. And in the remnant whom <laughs> Yahweh shall call that remnant of what? So where's the other nations in that? Mr. Hebrew nation builder, you're you're you don't know these scriptures, man. OK, so making Cornelius a, a, a heathen goes against what the Bible says. Now you'll say, oh, then they'll, they'll try to use Hebrew to say it's a new covenant. That new covenant is what the Israelites the scattered Israelites that were rounded back up and brought back together, man. You guys have a lack, a very, a, a lack of uh, of understanding. Let's go back to uh to the book of Amos now. No, of, of Malachi actually. Okay. And these these are actually milk scriptures, man. But you can drown people with milk. This is Malachi three and six. For I am Yahweh, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. All right. Let's get it in Hebrews 13 and 8. And it reads, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, not Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So to say that, the, that something with the Lord has changed, you're going against Scripture. Okay? Simple. You're going against Scripture, man. Okay? Now, let's get Zechariah. Mr. Uh, Hebrew nation builder. And for all you people out there who are doing this for filthy lucre's sake, who've joined on to uh, Esau, man, which is clear. This is uh, Zechariah uh, 14, 13. When it says a two thirds shall be cut off and die, and I'm like having a brain. Can't remember where it is right now. But it clearly says in Zechariah. Uh, there we go. Just found it. This is uh, Zechariah thirteen. Um. And eight, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith Yahweh, that two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Okay. Now it gave a precept. Let me look, check the precept before I read it. I don't want to call it. Let me read it to make sure. Yep. That's talking about Israel for sure. This is Romans 11 and five. And it, and it reads, uh, and it reads, even so then as the present at, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to election. That remnant is the Israelites. So how are you going to the elect of Israel? Not all of Israel, but the elect of Israel, because two thirds of Israel, all right, is going to be cut off and die. Thus said the Bible, thus said the Lord. So to say anything different, you're a liar, man. You're a liar and a false prophet. Now let's go back to uh to Acts. All right, let me just make a little note of something. Matter of fact, let me read one more scripture. This is uh Romans uh 9 and 27. And Elias also cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea. Wow, a remnant shall be saved. So he's telling you that many and the majority of Israel is going to die, man. How are you going to so if you're not trying, if you're not speaking and teaching about the elect, you're a liar. Okay, you're trying to appease, get money and build a church and make money on this side, man. Or you've completely sold out to Esau. It's either one or the other or both. Okay, especially with the way that video was done. And only, uh, only an unlearned, uh, uh, 
Israelite of two third would, would fall for that and believe in that anyway. A production like that. Okay. Now let's go back to the book of Acts. Okay. All right. Um, now he was in the Italian band. Now let's read this, this account here in the, in the book of Maccabees. This is 1 Maccabees 10 and 36. And I will further there be enrolled among the king's forces about 30,000 men of the Jews unto whom pay shall be given as belong of, as to all the king's forces. The <clears throat> Israelites <clears throat> were enrolled into the Greek and the Roman armies, man. Okay. They were fighting the Edomites. Okay. The, the, uh, Israelites were fighting Edomites. Let's prove it. Um, this is first Maccabees, um, four and 61. And they set their garrisons to keep it <clears throat> and fortify it best sure to preserve it, that the people might have a defense against Idumea. Five, first Maccabees five and three. And Judas fought against the children of Esau in Idumea. At Abertine, because they besieged Israel and he gave them a great overthrow and abated their courage and took their spoil. So, all right, uh, verse verse 15 and said, they of Ptolemy and Tyrus and Sidon and all of Galilee of the Gentiles assembled together against us to consume us. All right. And then later on in verse 10. They were trying to make peace and, 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 and enroll Israelites into their armies. And they did. Israelites served. And there's a, there are books written about the Israelites' service of, of, uh, in, 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 um, in Caesar's army, man. There are books written, written on the subject, man. So you are unlearned, all right? And or you're just a, an agent, which I believe you're an agent, man. I believe you're just a sellout agent that's doing this for filthy Luther's sake because you're trying to uh, write it there along with Nate, the only Israelites that are telling 100% truth, that are, that, are, that are speaking on the dark uh, uh, sayings, lamentation, and woe that's also in the Bible is GMS. No one else is doing that. Everyone else is giving you that smooth thing, you know, to, 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 uh, to, to, up, uh, you know, to mainly to bring the women in because women spend money. All right. And so that they can have favor with Esau in this kingdom. All right. Uh, Gehenna, General Gehenna of ISUPK, uh, publicly said that they need to build up in this kingdom. This kingdom is about to be destroyed, man. You guys are trying to fill out job applications in a burning building. All right. Trying to buy tickets to get on the Titanic. The Titanic sank, man. It's going to sink again. Okay. Then he mentioned Hebrews 3 and 28. Moving on to the next point, man. Okay. You know what? Matter of fact, before I go any further, I have to, you know what? I much needs to get this too. Because he's talking about the, you know, the Gentiles being brought in. And you have to understand that in many places in the Bible where it says Gentiles, it actually uh, tells you that in the New Testament, in most cases, that was talking about Greek-speaking Jews. So let's get that, because he clearly doesn't know that, right? And when people speak that way, like I said, they're either unlearned or they're set up by Esau. And once again, I believe that this man... Uh, is... This uh, Hebrew nation builder is is an agent for Esau. And this is Hellenist Jews who made, and this is out of the Zondervan's uh, Compact Dictionary Bible. Hellenists, Jews who made Greek their tongue, and with it, and with it, often adopted Greek ideas and practices. And it gives you Acts uh, nine and twenty nine, which I'm, I'm in Acts right now. So let's get nine and twenty nine. All right, and it says. 
And he spake boldly in the name. This is right before Cornelius. He spake boldly in the name of, of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. Hellenists, Jews who may greet their tongue and, and with it often adopted Greek ideas and practices. So in, in, so in, in, in um, Acts 9 and 29, he's telling you that those Grecians were Israelites because they did not want to hear the doctrine of the Lord because they were they had they were uh, uh, living their lives as Greek and, and and following Greek customs. Same thing that's going on in society today. He didn't he didn't make that. And so that's that's one of the reasons how we know that uh, Cornelius was an Israelite, because some of those people who were, who are living as Greeks woke up to their nationality or started following their heritage again. That's how you get adopted back in. That's what it's talking about in um in Galatians three and twenty eight. OK. This guy uh, took some some beautiful scriptures and just mangled them. OK. And then the same thing is spoken of in Acts uh, six and one. This is Acts six and one. All right. And it says. And in those days. When the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. I'll read the definition again. Hellenists, Jews who may Greek their tongue and with it often adopted ideas and practices, Acts 6 and 1. So those Grecians who murmured were feeling like they were being done wrong because those Greeks, even though they were, they were living their lives as Greek, they knew they were Israelites and they wanted some of that ministration given to their widows. OK, that the that the people who knew that they were Jews or the people who are practicing the uh, the law, statutes and commandments. OK, because you had these people waking up to the fact that they were Israelites, but then they were being mistreated anyway by the by the administrating uh, is Jews, the, the Pharisees and et cetera, et cetera, that were in charge at the time because the Pharisees were stuck up, arrogant and 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 did not want the uh, the, the second set of Gentiles, as we're reading. All right, because that's often the, the word Hellenist was put in the place of the word Gentile when speaking about Israelites. OK, let's get another account of that. OK, uh, out of the Youngs. So let's go to uh, Hellenist in here. Hellenists, and it reads, it says, see Grecian Jew. See, you're Greek, you're <laughs> right. So let's go back to G. And it gave the same scriptures, Acts 6 and 1, Acts 9 and 29. Can't get around this, man. Okay. Grecian Jews, Hellenists were Greek-speaking Jews. And they will contrast with the group of Christians likely to spoke Aramaic or possibly Hebrew. And there it is, man. So the ones, they want Aramaic, it was Hebrew. All right. Aramaic is Hebrew. Ar Ar it comes from Aram and Aram was a Hebrew, man. Okay. The, those are the people that came out of Shem. Shem's people spoke Hebrew. Okay. Matter of fact, some of the Hamites were speaking it too, man. All right, because it is this proof of conversations between Hebrews and Hamites. OK, so this guy is is unlearned, man. All right. Now let's go to Romans. Got two more points to cover. And uh, and the the debunked destruction of the Hebrew nation will be finished. This is Romans nine, one through five, which he read this scripture. And then he still talked about the heathens being a part of it. He has no reading comprehension. All right. It says, I say the truth in Hamashiach. I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. All right. Okay. I got... Exodus 32, 33, and 31. Let's look that up real quick. 
Why did I precept that? I'm sure it's for a good reason. 32, 33, and 31. And Moses returned unto the Lord and, and un, unto Yahweh and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. All right. Yet if thou would forgive their sin, if not blot, if not blot me, I pray thee out of thy book, which thou hast written. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Whosoever have sinned against me, will I will I blot out of the book? Okay, now why did I put that there? Hold on. Well, meaning the two thirds who are the kinsmen of their flesh. All right. But who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoptions, the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the services of Yahweh? So it says, according to the flesh. All right. My brethren, my kinsmen, people who are related to me by blood. All right. Who are Israelites to whom personal pronoun pertaineth the glory, the adoption, the covenants and the giving of the law. There was nobody there. We just read Amos. In Joel, the Lord wasn't dealing with any other nation, man. All right. And it's and then in verse five, it says, as the fathers, that same flesh, who's as the who are the fathers belong to the fathers, personal program. And of whom concerning the flesh, Hamashiach came, who was over all. All right. Yahweh bless um, forever. Amen. So he came back for the flesh of the Israelites, not only the flesh of the Israelites, but the flesh of the elect first. All right, because the two thirds got to die and they're going to be born into the kingdom through the elect. That's how all Israel is going to be saved. You, Mr. Hebrew uh, uh, nation builder, you're a false prophet and a liar, man. And I do believe that you're an agent. OK. So let's go to uh, Acts 13 and one now. Because I heard him, he used that and he used it incorrectly. As a matter of fact, uh, scripture is that to prove too that when he spoke to the Lord, he said, um, I believe that's in Acts 2. As a matter of fact, I'll get that first. Let's, let's, let's address that point too to prove the name. Because, uh, 20 minutes into the video, this guy never even mentioned a name, man. The first thing you do is mention the name of the Lord, man. The name is to be proclaimed um, to the heathens through all the lands where we were scattered to, not Christ and Jesus. All right. Those are Greek terms that were that came from from our captors, man. And those were and those were also uh, uh, titles and descriptions, not an actual name. This is Acts 26 and. Uh, and 14. I'll start there. And when we were all fallen to the earth and heard the voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, while thou persecutest thou me, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And for I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Yehoshai, whom thou persecutest. It's as simple as that, man. He just, the Bible in red letters Gave you, which is Jehovah speaking, let you, he said his name in the Hebrew tongue. He did not say it in Greek. Okay. Last point in Acts. Okay. Because this man, and I'm set to defend, to, to, to defend the gospel, man. All right. I'll mess around and be late this morning doing this. Okay. Um. This is a uh, last one. Cause this one a lot longer than I wanted, but these points needed to be proven, man. Acts thirteen and one. All right, and because it's an easy thing, like I said, to prove that the that the Israelites was a dark race of people, because it's all through the scriptures, man, and the relics that were found and dug up all over the world, all over the Middle East, all over Europe, prove it. Okay. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and and. And teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that were called nigger. All right. And, Lu and Lucius and, and of Cyrene and Manaim, Man 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 which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. 
Okay, so he said Niger. No, it's not pronounced Niger. That's incorrect. All right, that was an that was an old uh, doctrine. It wasn't one hundred percent true. That wasn't the way. It's actually nigger, and I'm gonna prove it. All right, this is the Winston Simplified Dictionary Encyclopedia Edition with biblical references, nineteen thirty three. One of my favorite books. Okay. And this is the word nigger. And it reads uh, dark skin. Now, oh, nigger. N I G E R with the long, with the hyphen over the E, letting you know that it's a long E. So it spells nigger like this. And I'm going to put it to the camera. All right. And it's spelled N I double G E. And it's spelled N I double G E R. That's the way it's spelled. And, it's, and the phonetic spelling is like this. Okay. Where is it? There it is. All right. That's how it's spelled. Let me put it up to the camera to show you that. Good. Now that you pause it and read that, and it says, um, dark skin one, nigger, black, a Negro. Now, usually a contemptuous or vulgar term. All right? Because it wasn't a contemptuous or vulgar, vulgar term in, in times past. It was just a simpler description of someone with dark flesh. So with that, I'm going to say all praises, glory, and honor be unto you. How about you? I was shy. Double honors unto the apostles. And the elders of GMS, all right, and salutations to the Akim and the Akwaf that are out there learning, reading and learning, and doing this work in truth and sincerity. Shalom.